so the software has finished and um, at this point you can, if you want, uh, as it says in the document, you can view up the track file information and that is accessible through the metadata menu and uh, you can take a look and see uh, how your system performed, how many motion, uh, how many vector pixels per hour, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, the first thing I really like to do though is once it has finished uh, computing is to go ahead and save the tracks. So uh, what that does for us is uh, in case uh, something happens uh, you, you can always revert back uh, without having to spend 10, 15, however long your system, however many minutes it took your system to uh, run the computation. So again you just go to file save tracks and then uh, give it a file name. So Okay, uh, what do we do here? Um, so if you can uh, uh, notice, I have uh, it has identified 32 tracks, and not all of them are necessarily true detections, but most of them are. So um, uh, let's go ahead and if you have the MPC Orbital database, then you can specify um, the path uh, to your uh, data file and you can also specify a matching threshold so uh, this indicates uh, how many arc minutes away the object has to be uh, or the distance the proximity of the object has to be uh, for it to be considered a match so I'm going to use the defaults here and um, when I click on load uh, the MPC or file it's going to go ahead and perform the match and so it, 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 it then attempts to identify uh, possible matches with the tracks that have been identified. So um, what we can do is first off if I click on the first track then it presents the image viewer and so um, we also have uh, another window here is the track positions so if you go ahead and um, yeah, there's a lot of windows here but um, you can use the down arrow key on your keyboard and you can notice uh, that as I scroll through the frames it uh, it goes ahead and uh, it presents that in the image viewer as well. Uh, the next thing I can do is um, again this is all for the purpose of validating the, the target so again this certainly looks like a real target um, I can also use the right arrow key to go to the next target so I don't even have to have the track navigator window in front of me, I can just use my keyboard, the arrow keys, and uh, validate the target. So I, again I'm using the up and down arrow keys to do this and I use the left and right arrow keys to go uh, to previous or next track. So I'm gonna, I just hit the right arrow key and another right arrow key for example. And you can notice that as well. So there's the uh, selection as I use my arrow key. So anyway, that is a, another way of doing it. Um, so the point is, um, we want to go ahead and make some measurements. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and optimize the tracks. So that's going to uh, improve upon the motion vector that's been computed. So I'll go ahead and click on optimize tracks. And then uh, the speed and PA have been updated. And now we can go ahead and load star catalog. So we are ready to start making measurements. And as you can tell, uh, I went ahead and those are in my settings for Star Catalog. I'm using the DR2 catalog from Gaia. And um, these are the other default settings. And so you can, you can update those as you wish as well. Um, again, for our purposes, for this example, uh, we're going to, for this first object, we can click on Verify Track. Uh, or we could do so here. Uh, either way is fine. And what that does for us, um, yeah, these blue rectangles are the catalog stars. Uh, what that does for us is, uh, you know, we, we can look at this animation that it generates. Um, we, you know, we can zoom out if we want to, zoom in, whatever. Uh, we can also invert the display. Um, but anyway, we recognize that this is a valid object. So if we want to, we can go ahead and click add observations. So um, it fills it in with the uh, populated MPC information. We click OK and it generates the observations. 
um, if we want to, we can pause that. And um, another nice feature here um, is that uh, there's integration with the Find Orb software. So um, uh, if you have the binaries here, um, which I do, um, I, I won't. I will go into that in more detail in another video. But um, if, if you have the Find Orb software, you can also perform quality analysis. You can check residuals. Uh, that sort of thing. So what I did just now is I, I selected these observations and I went to, uh, I right clicked and specified view with existing observations. And um, what that does for me is it allows me to compare uh, with the, the other observations that have been made. So uh, as you can tell, these were September 10 of last year um, that they were made. And so I go to September 10, um, of 2018 and as you can see uh, these are the residuals so um, uh, let's see yeah we have multiple actually um, but uh, yeah for our purposes these residuals look quite quite nice um, and uh, yeah these are actually the ones that are associated with this tutorial um, yeah so very good residuals and um, anyway, it provides a nice way to perform quality analysis. Um, yeah, the reason I knew that those were associated with this uh, example is um, I had the precision uh, of the timestamp to, to point 0.1. You can adjust that to, to your liking. Um, so yeah, there's obviously a lot of settings here. This tutorial is just supposed to cover the basics. Um, and so yeah, as we can see here in the, the guide, um, you know, we've done all of this and uh, we've created observations and um, yeah that's basically it for this tutorial so I will be creating more videos and uh, to go in more detail on other features in particular so I uh, hope you enjoyed watching uh, see you next time